Hey, it's Joe Lines from Yobiter, and today, this lesson, uh, we're going to be covering a lot of different stuff. Some of it's using COM and AutoHotKey and hyperlinks in Microsoft Word and replacing them. Some of it's just setting up tracking and this document I've been putting together. So first, let me, let me you know, start walking you through it here. This document, if we can get rid of this, has, it's in the one of the bonus lectures from my Udemy course. So um, if you go through one of the Auto, uh, Auto Hotkey Udemy courses, you'll get this at the bonus lecture at the end. And it has obviously a lot of links, hyperlinks in there. It's a pretty cool document I've put together for people that are just learning Auto Hotkey. However, what will be really interesting to know is uh, one, how many times people have clicked it, but not only that, you know what becomes really helpful from a marketing perspective is knowing what's working and what isn't. So could we do you know, two things. One, be able to tell how many people have clicked, but not only that, where did they click it from, right? And that's a really cool thing, which I shared in another video looking at Pretty Links, which is a WordPress plugin. That it, you don't have to use Pretty Links for WordPress. Uh, it's just a cool tool for WordPress that you can use. But you could have used anything to do the parameter replacement. You know, it depends where you're sending the URL to and how you build it. Let's go ahead and demonstrate how it works. But first off, let me, let me show you here. So in each one of these... So there's the automator slash intro, and then it's a question mark, and I have SRE equals one HOTS, right? So that the, actually, let's, let's bring this up. So control K, we'll pull that up for you. So here's, here's the actual URL. This takes you to the quote unquote pretty link, right? That's, I mean, what we'll do here in a second is see, let's go ahead and just navigate to it on its own, right? So watch what happens when I hit return this auto hotkey, uh, sorry, the automator slash intro is going to resolve to this other page, right? So that initial one is basically, it's a redirect. It's a URL that's used for tracking purposes and for other things as well, which maybe if I remember, I'll try to mention how, how critically important that is in some things in, in especially marketing where you, you post stuff and then later the destination changes the, this allows you to update that anyway. So, now I can see, hey, how many clicks, because back in here in the pretty links, uh, if I was to look up, let's see if I can do it this way. I should be able to search pretty links. Um, so there's been, that is not that, that's interesting. That intro is not that, but whatever, you get the idea. For this pretty link, API underscore webinar, there have been 35 complete clicks to it and 32 unique clicks, right? So I can tell each of those. Now, wouldn't it be really cool if I could tell where people click those from? Well, as long as I set it up using this query string parameter, so let's go in here and hit edit API webinar, just so I can make sure. Here is the pretty link that I've said, hey, when, when people go to this URL, send them here, right? So this is the plugin in WordPress, but make sure you click this advanced button here and say parameter forwarding, but make sure this is selected, right? Because that way, and let's go back to here. I'm going to hit this to copy. So let's say I go here, but now I'm going to put a question mark. Now this is HTTP protocol that we're going to discuss here a little bit. Um, I'm going to say SRC, not that it, it could be anything, right? The SRC for me is source. Where do they come from? Source equals. So, and we'll just say vid for this is the video we're in, right? I'm going to hit enter. Now see the question mark source equals. So see is how it's stuck up there. It's still here. This doesn't really matter, but I just wanted to point it out. Uh, when we come back into here and now if I go, let's see, if I go back and I look at these clicks, we should be able to see here, see this question mark source equals vid. So there's going to be one click to that. And that apparently is my IP address. Great. Um, but you get the idea, the refer, because I was actually on the page, it, it didn't have refer. But here you can see that there's uh, three here in a row that were from, this is, again, you have to know, you have to have the decoder ring, right? TAC is the automator.com for me in my head. So I know these were linked from the web, from the automator, on the automator. Um, I didn't have one for here. Here's one from my newsletter. So I had a link in my newsletter and someone clicked it. So it helps me understand what what's working and what isn't, right? it's a good way to learn, you know, where things are being clicked. And that way you might want to do, let's say I had a certain, let's say there were three, and I know there's more than three Facebook groups. I might do different 
parameters for each, you know, key value pairs, well, just the values for each one, for the different Facebook groups. And then I could tell, hey, how many clicked in this group, Facebook group versus this one versus this one, right? So pretty powerful stuff. The problem, let's get back into the uh, auto hot, where we're going to go with auto hotkey code, is each one of these things, if I hit control K, um, I have, I have to add source equals one hot. So I have right now seven Udemy courses. And so I want the one is the, um, which order of the courses for me, hot strings is my first course. So it's number one. And then H O T S is just a reminder for me. It's hot strings, right? Um, the second one is the intro to auto hotkey. So it'd be two. And then probably like intro is what I think I might use. Uh, so the trick is, there is no way in Word to just search replace part of a URL destination, you know, and also just, you know, if you do a search replace for the one hots, it doesn't find it, unfortunately. Um, it, it's just not something that the edit, you know, control H search replace is trying to do. So that is where using com comes in. So here's my script and here, this is just if, if, uh, if if Word wasn't open, this would allow me to open the file. So this if right here, I sent it, let's put a zero just so it's a little clear. Um, if it was a one, it would run this, but because it's a zero, it says, hey, ignore this, right? So this is, allows me to easily turn things on and off. Um, this is the, this creates the com object, stores a pointer to it in the doc, and then this says, hey, let's open that, the path of this file, which happens to be the one we're working on, uh, and make it visible because Everything you do with like on this in Word, you could do all the stuff and have it hidden and it's much, much faster, but then we, you and I wouldn't see anything, which is, it sucks. But anyway, we're not, because it's already open, I have that Word document, you know, this is open. Um, I can just actively connect to it, which is a little simpler, which is why this has a one in here. And so it says, hey, com object activate. So active, so connect to that active com object and then activate the Word doc. This actually, it was weird. Years ago, I had done this and it worked great without this line here. And then just this morning or last night, um, I was trying to do this again. And for some reason it wasn't working and I had to troubleshoot and figure it out. And so I finally figured out that I, I had to activate the, the document, even though it was open and it should have been active. I don't know. Anyway, so now we're going to go, um, this. So let me turn this on. I'm going to do a one here and I'm going to turn a zero down here. Again, I'm just enabling and disabling sections of my code. So right now there's this and this, and I could, you know, I could hit control Q or I could do, I forget what the in block commenting out is. I just prefer this because it's just changing this and I can still see the IntelliSense. Um, but here's my little function I wrote. Oh, sorry, not a function, but should be a function really. Anyway, um, it's going to look for this question mark source equals hots two hots and going to replace it with source equals one hots. Now, initially I had them in a different order and two hots was what I had, but some of them were one and some were two. And, and that was where it was really confusing. So I said, Hey, let me replace them all to one. And so I've done that. Um, and I'll, I'll step through the code here in a second, but let me finish where I was going with that. Someone wrote me a while back when I was been really busy, but they said, Hey, some of these links are broken in the word doc. Well, they're not broken, but they all take me to the same place. I like in the intro to GUIs course, I still had them going to the intro to auto hockey course. And so I said, you know, Hey, while I'm in here, why don't I create this separate section so I can enable that and loop over the links and shove them into the clipboard basically. And that's what I've done down here. So. Before we step into that, let's go ahead and finish the little search replace. So here is a loop where I get the count of active hyperlinks because um, if we do too many, it'll come up with an error. Not that that's a big deal, but uh, we get the active count of how many hyperlinks there are. And then I say, hey, go get this A index. So as we go through, let's get the first one, right? And this is the hyperlink, the address. So the address is the actual URL where it's going to go. And I store that right here. Um, and then I do a string replace for the old, um, so I'm getting the address and I do a string replace with the old, um, with the new string. So that's what I'm doing down here and shove it back into the address, right? So, so as it's looping through, it's going to say, Hey, first let's look at the first one. Hey, let's get the thing, store it. If, if it has this old string value of two, 
replace it with the one, right? So that's what it does there. And it goes through all of them. And then it just tells me, even though this is incorrect, um, my dog is, is sitting here trying to get my lap. Yeah. He, uh, what I should do is take a count first of how many it found with that and then count how many were replaced. But because it's just me, I'm just trying to get an idea of how many um, hyperlinks there were in there and, and, and to make sure it's consistent as I go through the document. So that's all this is doing here. It's just saying, hey, we've done, and I should just say this many hyperlinks were found probably is a better, more accurate thing. Uh, but that's what that's doing. So that's the search replace. And what's cool is I can, you know, save, do this search replace, save the whole document um, as a new name, and then go back through and replace all the, you know, the, um, the old strings. And this is where I'll change it with a new one and then save the file as a whole different document for the other bonus lecture. And so each of the, I'm going to have seven different bonus lecture files, each of them with specific targeting uh, appended to the URLs that will allow me to tell where people came in from, right? Um, what I also found was sometimes I didn't have a pretty link on a given URL. And so that that's where this, I said, hey, let's, let's make something really simple and quick. So let's turn this off and we'll actually demonstrate this one just because it's, it's simple and it's not going to replace anything. Um, so here we're going to connect to it. And actually in reality, like this, these two lines and these two lines, actually that, that's funny. Okay. I don't need those two lines anymore because, or three lines, excuse me. Because those are done up above. Oops. But I do need the if. Let's put this down here. There we go. Now it's going to do a loop. Oh, and that. There we go. I had it structured slightly differently, so it, um, it, it would have erred when I tried to run it. I would have had to solve it, but I just saw it now, so... Hopefully that's correct. So this if is, is tied to this block of code. It's going to loop. Because it's just one line, I don't need the friends. Um, and then after it's done, it's going to take the, the links value and shove it into the clipboard and display it down below here. Um, and then, and more really importantly, clear it out. Because if you run it multiple times, which is what I did one time, I'm like, wow, how did I get 500 links in this thing? And I realized I wasn't blanking them out. Anyway, um, what we're doing here is we're getting the the url address and we're parsing it on the question mark and so that basically says get everything up to the leading question mark the dot one is going to say take everything to the left of the first question mark and this is insert a tab and then everything to the right of the second so of the first question mark because it's number two right and then add a line return to the end so i'm going to save this relaunch it and hit my hot key so it just did so there's 109 links and then here, let's see, I can scroll up. Here you can see uh, the structure of them, right? But the reason why I used a tab here, and I know I'm jumping around a lot of stuff, is I can, and it's already copied to my clipboard, so I just highlighted it, but I don't really need to do that because um, if we go over to Excel and we hit paste, Excel automatically uses the tab as a parser. So if you have data that has a tab in it, it'll break it into another column, right? So here I can quickly look at it. And when I did this before, um, I should try to find one of the original files. This, a lot of these were broken. They weren't correct. They had, you know, sometimes I had a typo, this and that. And over here, some of these were going to the forum, some were going to um, GitHub. And I'm like, you know, the point of this document is to see what's working and what isn't. So I want to create these pretty link redirects for every link in this document, even though it was painful because it was a lot, uh, but it's, it's allowed me to help learn what's working. Now, to be clear, it doesn't tell me you, whoever the, you know, who, who clicked it, right? It just tells me the number, right? I, I have, I don't have the email address or IP address or something. Actually, there is the IP if we look at it, the tracking, uh, but I, I don't have IP addresses of the people. So. Um, it's, it's not, it would be really hard for me to figure out who tracked it. Um, and you could append, no, cause, uh, cause again, it's, it's the same link for everybody, right? Um, so don't get too creeped out by it, but it is really beneficial to understand what's working and what isn't. So that's why I do all this stuff. Um, here you can see, these are the, the, these are all the pretty links And what I probably should do is loop over these and load them as pages to make sure they're they're working. Um, I did go through and dedupe them to make sure there were a couple duplicates, but I'm okay with that because 
uh, in the document actually like automate my task. It's featured up here as here's the page, here's the syntax. It's I call it a syntax writer, right? But you're writing auto hotkey code with it. So there's the playlist. There's 22 videos on it. There's the webinar we did on finding and clicking. And then down here, I haven't mentioned again in these other tools. And that one, it, it's such a popular, really cool tool that I said, you know what? I don't mind having that in here twice. It's sure not going to hurt anything. Hopefully you get the idea uh, that that's what I was doing. And this is how I used a lot of different things. And I know this was, you know, it wasn't as focused of a video, but I wanted to just demonstrate my thought process and how I use a lot of different tools to go about to do something. So, well, I mean, to, to finish it up, what I'm going to do here is after this is done is I will print this as a PDF because not everyone has Word, even though you think maybe they do, but they don't. And it's, it's just fine, right? But I'll save it as a PDF file and put that into um, the bonus lectures and uh, and you can download it from that URL, the pretty link I made up above. And yeah, I'll know you came from a YouTube video uh, unless I post this link uh, for something on the automator and maybe then I would change that redirect to something else and that way I can tell where you're coming from. So hope that helps. The uh, auto hotkey code, I, I would paste it. I mean, it's not a lot of code, so I'm not gonna share that necessarily, but you get the idea, right? Hopefully you can see how Using Calm um, to help write your, you know, work on your documents in, you know, I would hate to have to do, how many were there? There was 109 links. And so for each one of those links, I would have to do that seven times. So it's over 700 hyperlinks. I would have to go through and fix manually and hope I don't screw it up because it'd be really easy to mess one of those up um, because I, I had done them before when I was doing them manually. And, and what I did before was I did them manually because you have to to kind of set up the first time but what i didn't do was to preview kind of use this to take a look at them and make sure that they were proper and correct and like i said i should i know i have you can use a win http request to loop over and do a um you can put in a head request which just means get the header and ping it and if it returns a 200 then it's a valid uh url destination from the API call. And so that would be a quick, easy way instead of loading every page in our browser and making sure it's just, do I want to make sure that these things even load? You know, they should come back with a 200. Um, if they don't, the problem is they'll, it'll get, no matter what, it's a redirect. So I'm not sure if that would work, uh, but you get the idea. Hopefully that helps and I hope you're having a great day. Cheers.